So I'm going to introduce in this video a uh, some work by Martin Weitzman, um, which is sort of a critique, if you like, of um, the integrated assessment models that uh, people like Bill Nordhaus uh, developed for a climate change, also what uh, the IPCC and other agencies use to think about climate change. Um, I think this is a really cool paper. Um, I think it makes a very deep point, not just about climate change, but just more generally thinking about uh, big disasters or catastrophes. Um, this is definitely the hardest thing that I've had you guys read yet. This is an article from an economics journal. Um, so bear with me. Um, some parts I'm going to have you skip, and I'm going to explain more in this video than I've explained in the other videos about the details of, uh, of the paper, because I think it'll help you to sort of hear a little bit about what's going on here before you, um, you actually jump in and read it. So uh, let's see here. I kind of want to just go through the, some of the equations. Okay, so if you've read the... Um, the stuff we are going to talk about on the dice model then um we talked quite or one of the things they talk about one of the important parameters is this climate sensitivity okay so um you know the way that's defined is as sort of the amount that the temperature is going to increase ultimately in equilibrium like in the long run equilibrium if uh, greenhouse gases increase by a certain amount, okay? Uh, not by a certain amount, if they double. In fact, it's, it's exactly, if, they, if we double the amount of greenhouse gas, how much does that cause the uh, temperature to increase in, in like the long run equilibrium, okay? So you can see that uh, Weitzman writes out this complicated expression. Don't worry too much about it. He's not really gonna use it uh, later anyway. But um, you can look up here, and I've sort of explained why that's equivalent to what we just said, that when the temperature, or when we double the amount of greenhouse gas, then we're going to get, then S1 is going to be the temperature change that comes from that doubled greenhouse gas. Um, so, yeah. Again, he doesn't really use that much below, so you don't have to really remember it. Um, So here he's talking about S2, um, which is sort of like uh, a even more, um, sort of an even bigger amount of sensitivity to the climate. So he's saying, okay, well, S1 is, is uh, how much we expect temperature to increase if we uh, double the amount of greenhouse gases. But then S2 is like even ramping that up more because there's these feedback mechanisms that aren't considered by the process in S1. And he's got some calculations here that are somewhat complicated. Don't worry about them. They're not important for the point of the paper. This is the takeaway really for all this discussion. He just says that um, the probability that there's a 10%, uh, that there's an increase in the temperature of 10, 10 degrees Celsius is 5%. And the probability that there's an increase in the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius is 1%. Okay, so those are just some numbers, but he wants to say that even though those probabilities are low, this is still something we, we should be spending a lot of effort worrying about. Okay. Uh, right, so he's going to talk about a fat tail. So maybe, you know, with this climate sensitivity, you'll see when we talk about the DICE model, that's one of these parameters that we sort of play with in the DICE model and say, well, you know, if the climate sensitivity is 2.3 degrees, then this is how the model performs. If it's 3.5 degrees, then this is how the model performs. So Weitzman here is saying, you know, we don't really know what the climate sensitivity is, and that's an important input into IAMs like the DICE model. Okay? And he says, in fact, these, um, this climate sensitivity has like a distribution, we don't know what it is, but it has this fat tail. It could actually be quite large, okay? Um, so what, is a, what does a fat tail look like? You know, here would be like a PDF of S2. 
So, you know, when S2 is high, it's like the tail, it's not thin like a normal distribution. It's like fat, like a, a power law, if you're familiar with that. Okay, so then you can see he's going to develop this little model. Okay, it's just a two period model. And um, it's somewhat complicated. Um, so I've tried to sort of explain these things. So for instance, he says y, which is log of consumption, is actually the um, is actually the growth. You can think about that as like the growth of the economy. Okay. Um, and this is why. Like y is defined as c2 minus c1 divided by c1, right? So that's like a growth rate. Um, and then that's approximately equal to log of consumption in period two minus consumption in period one. And then since we've assumed, he assumes in here somewhere that consumption in period one, we're gonna normalize that to be one. Well, of course the log of one is one. So then that just says that we can think about the log of C2, the, our consumption in period two as the, growth, as the growth rate of consumption. So I've got some notes here, you can read them. Um, yeah, so you know, this is somewhat complicated. So I've written, I've taken some parts and just said, you don't need to worry about this. Like here, this looks like a complicated uh, expression, but you know, this is just the definition of expectation, right? So he's saying if we define uh, the expectation of M as uh, this thing, the expectation of beta times the expectation of X negative eta times Y. Well, look down here, we've got beta times, times the expectation of E to the power negative eta times Y. And then F of Y is just the distribution of Y. And then when you read this, you'll see what that is. Um, so yeah, I've got some notes here to try to help sort of interpret these a little bit more um, and explain what he's doing. Um, yeah, so I think maybe maybe here I'll just, rather than go into the details of all these equations, let me just briefly say what he's doing here. So he's saying that, um, you know, there's one sort of uncertainty, we might call it risk, which is that given, you know, the structure of a model, say an IAM model, you know, there's some risk about what's gonna happen in that model. Maybe we're gonna, you know, if things turn out one way, uh, you know, consumption won't fall very much in if the climate changes and they turn another way, it'll fall more. But the point is we sort of know the structure of the model and inside the model, given sort of the, the way that the model generates data, um, you know, there's a risk, okay? But then we might have uncertainty about, you know, the structure of the model itself. That's like an additional source of uncertainty. And when we add that uncertainty to the risk in the model, then it turns out that this uncertainty is huge. Um, and it means that, uh, you know, there's a fairly big chance that we have these big disasters that then um, make things really, really bad, okay? So if we're gonna do some sort of cost-benefit analysis about comparing, uh, you know, reducing consumption today in order to reduce the risk of something bad happening tomorrow, you know, the fact that things can be so bad is just going to dominate that cost-benefit analysis in such a way that it said that it should say that we we should just spend everything. Um, you know, we should spend all of our resources today in order to just to prevent these unlikely but really really terrible outcomes. Okay, so um, that's kind of the point of this model and the point of the paper, I guess, more generally. Um, in my interpretation, I'll be interested to hear your interpretation as well. But um, but yeah, so rather than go through the details of the model, I think I'm just gonna say that. Um, yeah, 
obviously you don't need to read the proof of this theorem. Uh, there's some parts you can skip, like this paragraph I think is not essential to read. Um, and then down here, I've, I've kind of marked out a bunch of things that you can skip as well. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, so that's kind of the idea. Um, I think this is a very provocative critique of uh, the sort of IAM model that's very widely used in uh, the literature on climate change. And uh, I think it's an important critique to understand. So, uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, we'll talk about this one on Tuesday.